tonight she was unable to attend so being instant in season and out of season I had to come up with another message I didn't plan but God did plan he knew when we sent it out who was going to do what amen it's been a really hectic day so Whatever we come up with, it's going to be of the Lord. All right. Amen. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, so we are going to be all the Lord. Hallelujah. It's going to be all the Spirit. Yeah. Oh, Taking all those allergy pills and, and stuff drives everything you think yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I said, I wasn't anticipating, so I took two different brands today because I'm trying a new brand. <laughs> so if you see me drinking frequently, okay, it so might be a reason you brought that to me. <laughs> Lord, know before you know. Amen. Amen. Today's message will be about the Feast of Weeks, mm. about Pentecost. All right. Amen. Pentecost. Amen. And if you break that word down, cost is in it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Pente is in repentance. Or repentance when you pay for something. Yeah. You know? Pente cost. Pente. So it's something that costs you. Amen. Ooh, all right. Yeah. That's exactly right. Come on, yeah. Yeah. Glory. Amen. Glory. Glory. Yeah. Also called the Feast of Weeks. Mm -hmm. Amen. The Feast of Weeks, and it occurs 50 days after the uh, after the first fruit festival, right, celebrating wow. the end of the grain harvest. Wow. Yes, Lord. Amen. The Greek word means 50, hmm. 50th. Mm -hmm. And the primary focus of the festival was the gratitude to God for the harvest. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> Gratitude to God mm, for the harvest. Mm, Lord, I thank you for this evening. I thank you for your spirit going before yes, you. Amen. And I thank you for just watching over us. Uh, we pray for all those that are going through. Yes. I ask that you uh, touch Minister Beach and be with her and, yes. and uh, let everything come back in a positive for her. Yes. Let her get a good night's rest, Lord. And yes. I pray for Lorenzo yes. and her entire family that you give yes. them peace. Yes. Let them know that uh, she is with you. Amen. And I pray for all. Uh, Minister Swope, as yes. he's uh, starting a new job and a new everything today, be with him. Yes, and I pray for the Swope family in general that you Amen. touch them, Lord. Yes, and I pray God. that you have your way in that. Everything their family is about to do, Lord. Yes, and I pray Lord. that uh, above all things, love will rule. Yes, yes. Lord, it will conquer yes. anger, it will conquer yes. vengeance, it will yes. conquer everything, Lord. So I just pray that you be with them. Yes, and Father, I pray that the message become a message one day. Yes, Lord. That he'll be able to lead and teach others. Yes, Lord. And Father, don't, we know you don't waste any crisis. Amen. And I just pray for strength and health for those that need it and those that have been running on empty Amen. and those that have been doing more than they should do, Lord. And uh, everybody can jump back into full mode <laughs> after taking a year off. <laughs> so, Lord, we pray that uh, we use wisdom as we yeah. use it to this day. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> And Lord, we just pray that uh, this virus leave our land. Amen. We pray that this virus be contained worldwide. Hallelujah. We pray against the ignorance yes. that keeps thinking that this is a political thing or it's a sign of your faith if you don't get a vaccination. Amen. God has never told us to put him to a foolish test. Amen. And we pray for those that are uh, misusing the word of God. Amen. Those that are uh, just trying to come up with a quick answer that 
Jesus to take care of everything, but Jesus always gives you wisdom. Yes, Lord. And he allows you to take care of what's on your level. Amen. He never wastes his miracle power on something we can do ourselves. Amen. And people forget that. He's not going to miraculously feed you when you can get up and go to work. Amen. He's not going to miraculously pay, pay all your bills because you've been praying. Amen. God doesn't do things for you just because you ask. Amen. And you can command or whatever. He, he's not a cosmic genie. Amen. He is the keeper of the universe. Yes, he, he watches day and night. Mm -hmm. He neither sleeps nor slumbers. Hallelujah. And Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness in all things. Now we pray as we continue this week of conv convocation. Amen. Mm -hmm. That everybody receives something, Lord. Mm -hmm. We pray that each speaker be anointed. Each speaker mm -hmm. be on fire. Each speaker yes, come in their own Lord. way. Yes, Lord. Lord, we're praying for a fire of the Holy Ghost to yes, come into this Lord. house. Yes, Lord. Lord, our numbers may not be as large as they normally are, but there's a lot of power here in the few that are here. And I thank you, Lord, that you don't need numbers. You don't need crowds. You don't need people to come and approve of what you've already preordained. We know if God called it, then it's going to be all right. If God called it, it's going to come to pass. If God said it will be, it will be. And I thank you for your faithfulness in all things, Lord. And we pray that you continue to walk with us and keep us in all things. Pray for our nation. We pray for the safety of our nation. We pray for our troops in harm's way. Lord, we pray they come home. That they quit coming up with excuses to keep yes, them in the Middle East and keep them spread all across the world. Yes, Bring our young people home, Lord. Yes, Lord. We have the technology to get anywhere in the world in, the, in just a few seconds. We have missiles and things that can reach all around this world. We don't need physical bodies in these places. Yes, and it just causes more conflicts with the locals. So, Lord, we pray we get past that old world thinking, that old WW2 thinking, and coming yeah. to the modern world. Yes, this is a modern world where meetings are held virtually, where meetings are held without having to travel, where meetings and things yeah. are being negotiated through ambassadors. Mm -hmm. We don't need all this confusion, Lord. We pray that the people use the things that we have, yes, that we can reach out and find peace. Hallelujah. And I do pray for peace. Amen. And even as John said, even now, Lord, come soon. Yes, Amen. 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 All right, the Feast of Weeks. Mm -hmm. Must have been in a hurry. Didn't even come up with a title. That's a good one. <laughs> the Feast of Weeks. <laughs> Pentecost. Amen. Amen. And as I was saying, this feast reminds us of the fulfillment of Christ. Because mm -hmm. Christ was, you know, another term, you look up 50 mm -hmm. in the Bible, 50 is an important number. Yes, Because it it's the year of Jubilee. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You know, it's mm -hmm. a jubilee you set free. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And even yeah. if you notice when Jesus said you forgive somebody, mm -hmm. seven times 70, that came to 490, but he stopped just short of mm -hmm. the jubilee. Uh -huh. Or just short of that next number. Mm -hmm. You know, and even beaten, beaten with the stripes. Mm -hmm. They always stopped. It was it was 50 lashes, but they right. never gave you 50 yeah. in case they miscounted went over because they could receive the same right. thing. Yes. Right. So, you know, just a, a quick study of 50. Yeah. It's an awesome number. You know, and by 50, you pretty well know what's going on. Amen. If you're a human being. You know, you 18, 19, 20, you think you know everything. Yeah, well. You know, by the time you're 30 or 35, you think you got a good grasp on things. And 40, you think, ah, oh, I'm still looking good. By 50, you ain't even worried about it. <laughs> I ain't even worried about it. I ain't trying to compete with a 25-year-old, a 20-year-old. I'm not going to try and play basketball along with them or nothing else. You know, the whole endurance and the mental thing is you ask more questions at 50 yes. before you react. Yes. At 20, you react off of emotions. Yes. But at 50, you're going to say, why? why? <laughs> is it necessary? <laughs> and is it my problem? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's something you don't realize, too. A lot of times we get caught up in other people's problems and we forget to ask. Is it my is it problem? Because yeah, yeah. right. your problem is not my need to change my life. Yeah. And I can give you grace and mercy and do something to help you. Don't get me wrong. Right. But by the same token, your failure to plan and prepare is not a reason for me to be in a pain. Amen. Right. You know? Amen. Then he goes on in the promise that was sent. He would send another helper in John 14, 16, who would indwell the believers and empower them for ministry. Yeah. The coming of the Holy Spirit. 50 days after Jesus' resurrection was the guarantee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Ephesians 1, 13 through 14, mm -hmm. that the promise of salvation and the future resurrection would come to pass, the indwelling in the presence of the Holy Spirit in every born again believer mm -hmm. is what seals us Amen. in Christ Amen. and bears witness Amen. with our spirit 
that we are indeed joint heirs with Christ. Amen. Joint heirs. Yes. See, you know, even in the biblical terms, the oldest got everything. Mm -hmm. He got a double portion that everybody else got was right. left out of right. the other half. Mm -hmm. But he had a double portion because he was supposed to take care of the parents. He was their social security. <laughs> so he got all the lands and everything. He made all the decisions and everything became the oldest. But now we are joint heirs. Mm -hmm. You don't have a bigger inheritance than I do. Mm -hmm. God is not going to give me more than he gives you. Right. We are joint heirs. Yes. You know, yep. you learn that uh, when you when you buy a car jointly, Amen. you just can't get mad and go sell it because mm -hmm. they'd be asking you where's the other signature. <laughs> you know, where, where's the other person there? I mean, you file a joint tax, uh -huh. and they're gonna ask you, well, where's the other person that signed this tax? <laughs> you know, when you joined, mm -hmm. you joined and joined together, mm -hmm. the two become one. Amen. Even in, in you know, in legal matters, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people don't realize anything you bought while you married. In Illinois, it's half. Yeah. You say, well, I didn't sign for that. That don't make no difference. Yeah. It's half. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> some other states let you argue the prenuptial and all that, but Illinois cut it to the chase. Mm -hmm. Any money you earn, anything else, right. half. <laughs> yeah, so was, yeah, I remember one time a friend of mine left his wife, and he was sitting around with less than half of all this stuff. Because she got all the furniture. She got everything. And we sitting in this little apartment. He had one of them little bitty trucker TVs. Mm. I think it was like five inches mm. or something. We sitting there trying to watch a football game and talk, arguing about the play. <laughs> we lead it for it. Nah, he missed that. You know what I mean? Look at this little bitty TV. Wow. And he used to brag about having three 25 inch TV mm. floor models. But she cut him down. Mm. And then finally he looked at it. It was better to be with her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he got tired of having nothing. <laughs> and he realized everything that shine is not gold. All right. Everything Amen. with glitter is not gold. Amen. Amen. A lot of people fooled with fools gold. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's the promise of that future salvation. Amen. The resurrection will come to pass. Mm -hmm. The presence of the Holy Spirit in every born again believer. Yes. Amen. Some yes. people ask me, how come believers sin? Mm -hmm. Because they're not born again. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you are born again, you will not fall into a major sin. Amen. Simple as that. Because the Holy Ghost will prevent you. Yes, yes, amen. Yes. But if you have a head knowledge and think you have a good feeling knowledge, then you might slip. Mm -hmm. But if you are bought and paid for with the blood of Jesus yeah, Christ, glory. the same blood that makes yeah. people become a martyr, amen. the same blood that makes people give up wealth and comfort and move all around the world to talk to people they don't even know. Yeah, Lord. That's Holy Ghost. Yeah, Make you leave your family and friends and everything you grew up with and everything you know mm -hmm. and go serve some people that may not even want you there. Mm -hmm. That's Holy Ghost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the Holy Ghost power. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. and people ask me, well, why do ministers sin and why do nuns get caught up in all that? I mean, when I was in Catholic school in the 60s, there were so many nuns leaving to get married. Mm -hmm. And I know we had at least five in the four years out of the Catholic school. And every time one of them left, you know, two or three of them left with a priest. Mm. <laughs> you know? Mm. And, and uh, you know, they just realized they was married to Jesus, but Jesus wasn't enough on that level. All right. <laughs> and they, they fell in love, and then the Catholic Church didn't allow them to marry, so they would leave the order, and then they would never speak their name again. Wow. It was like they never existed. Wow. You know? And it was weird. If, you know, you go to the classroom, everything's erased, all that stuff is gone. Oh, yeah. It's like, like they were never, never there. there. <laughs> but you got to be spirit filled. Amen. Mm. And with being a joint heir, I like that. Yeah. And after the spring feast concludes and the feast of the weeks, there is a period of time before the fall feast begin. This time is spiritually symbolic of the church age in which we live today. Christ's sacrifice and resurrection are past. We have received the promise of the Holy Spirit, and now we wait his second coming. Just as the spring feast pointed towards the Messiah's ministry, at his first coming, mm -hmm. the fall point towards what will happen at his second coming. Mm -hmm. The second coming, that's that double harvest. Mm -hmm. See, the harvest in the fall is that other harvest. Mm -hmm. That's his second coming. Mm -hmm. And among the Lord's, among the feast of the Lord is pronounced Shavute. Mm -hmm. Shavute mm -hmm. is the only one that doesn't have a specific date associated with it, such as Passover on Nisan the 14th. Mm -hmm. The Lord simply said to celebrate it 50 days after the Feast of First Fruits, Amen. which starts two days after the Passover. Mm. God specifically told the sons of Jacob that they were to count seven weeks from the first fruits. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. Leviticus 23. Mm -hmm. 15. In Deuteronomy 16, 9, on the next day, in the 50th day, the fourth feast of the year was to be observed. This feast is also called Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And Acts 2, 1, from the Greek word, which means 50th. Mm -hmm. Because of God's command to count the days, the time period from the first fruits of Shavuot is known as Shafar. And it's the Hebrew word for counting. Mm -hmm. The measure of the barley which was brought to the temple as a first fruit offering was also known as an omer, mm -hmm. which in Hebrew means measure sheaf. Mm -hmm. So with the hito sheaves of mm -hmm. grain. Mm -hmm. So this offering of omer, the 50-day period, is also known as the omer, mm -hmm. or the counting of the omer. Mm -hmm. Where is the shafat day described in the Bible? Well, it's described in several places. Mm -hmm. You know, in its plural form in the Hebrew word, the temple offerings described in Leviticus 23, 15 through 21, and Numbers 28, 26 to 31, requires for individual worshipers who are recorded in Deuteronomy 16, mm -hmm. 9 through 12, where they were instructed to offer free will offerings, to rejoice before the Lord, yeah. and to remember that the Lord had freed them from bondage in Egypt. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. See, we may not have been slaves in Egypt, ah. yes. but we were slaves to sin. Yes. And when the Lord has freed you from a life of sin, yeah. the Lord has freed you from the bondage and the Thank guilty conscience yeah. and the things you go through. Amen. So, hey, man, this is this feast. Of, this is the deep one. Uh -huh. There are seven feasts that are declared by the Lord. Mm -hmm. They're called solemn feasts. Mm -hmm. yep. And it is Exodus 23, 14 through 17, Deuteronomy 16, 16, during which all the Israelite men over the age of 20 were obligated mm -hmm. to present themselves at the temple. Everybody over 20. That's why we got the age of 21 being the age of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And you could join the army and you could vote and all those things that used to be. You could buy liquor and all that. Mm -hmm. You know, that was set based on that rule. Mm -hmm. and, said it, and then they were supposed to come there for these following ceremonies. As the Sabbath and other feast days, this was the holy convocation or the rest day. Mm -hmm. And no work was permitted on these days in That's Israel. Right. Mm -hmm. Today, observant Jews and most secular Jews also do not work during these days. Oh, the Sabbath days. Amen. So, you know, it, just to give you a little background on this. Mm -hmm. It's just, some people think it's like waiting for these holy days. The Jews, it, it, it would be taking so long in anticipation like a child with Christmas. Mm -hmm. But it was the wait that mankind waited from the fruit in the garden until when Christ came. Oh, wow. yeah. So if you think in terms of wait, mm -hmm. Mankind waited from generation to generation, from generation to the one that was promised to crush the serpent's head. So we waited. And those that are now waiting in graves and, and waiting, you know, just waiting in the presence of the Lord. But they're waiting. They're waiting for that second coming. They're waiting for that getting up morning. They're waiting for when God will call them forth. They're waiting. But it's not a waiting with any anxiousness yeah. or worry. Glory. It's a waiting with anticipation. Yeah. Yeah, I'm anticipating yeah. what's to come. Yeah, man. Thank you. I remember, you know, we used to get gifts when I was a kid. and They'd hide them in different places in the house. <laughs> we spend days looking for gifts. Sometimes you go over to your friend's house and see the gifts, thinking they're, they're their gifts. Mm. They didn't hit my gifts over somebody else's house. You know, they throw me off. <laughs> you know, so I'm just saying, you know. And I remember that, that one when I turned eight, I, I really didn't believe in Santa Claus no more. Mm -hmm. But they almost got me because there was snow footprints in the carpet. <laughs> and the bicycle was cold and all the gifts were really, really cold. Mm -hmm. And when they woke me up, everything looked like the cookies were eating and all that. And <laughs> one was left. You know, and the milk was drank. Mm -hmm. oh. And then, you know, I mean, they really had me going there. I was, I was really believing. I was like, oh, man, maybe Santa was here. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Because they, they really went out their way to fool me. <laughs> you know, no disclaimer for those that uh, still believe. <laughs> but it said the law of the feast. The Passover speaks of redemption. The Messiah, the Passover lamb, has been slain for us. Unleavened bread speaks of sanctification. He was sinless and set apart. His body would not decay in the grave. He didn't have any leaven in him. Unleavened bread. He was found without leaven. 
And then the Feast of the Week speaks of the origin, mm. the coming of the Holy Spirit. Mm. The Holy Spirit is inaugural. Amen. The coming. Mm. And it's set into motion the new covenant of the church age, mm. which the Messiah spoke of in the upper room in Matthew 26, mm. 28, 9. Yes, Lord. Jesus, the Messiah, rose from the dead yeah. on the first fruits. Yeah. See, the first fruits was after death, and then two days later, when he got about the grave, yeah. got about the grave. No, <laughs> that's what he said. Thank you, Lord. Then he spent 40 days with his disciples, yeah. Acts 1 and 3, yes, Lord. telling them that he would send the Holy Spirit, yeah. which occurred 10 days after his ascension, yeah. 50 days after the first fruit yeah. Yeah. was his resurrection. Yeah. During Shavuot, two loaves were brought to the temple. They re represented the Jew and the Gentile. All right, come on, God. Now one with the Messiah, uh -huh. with the coming of the Holy Spirit. These two loaves that were separate are both now laying on the altar Amen. together. Amen. All right. Both loaves are equal. Amen. They also represented the two tablets that Moses received. Yeah, yeah, two yeah. tablets. Right. Yeah, see, yeah. see, the feast of Woo! this one gets deep. Come on, Holy And during this age, believers yeah. have not yet been glorified, but they're still. Within the, there's still sin within the church because mm -hmm. the promise is there, but there's still stuff sneaking in. There's still people that quite don't have it. Yeah, yeah. You know. So you see, each major event of the Messiah's first coming occurred on the exact date of the Jewish holidays. Mm -hmm. So everything that he did and went through lined up with what was already foretold. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> you know. Amen. Amen. And from this pattern, we can summarize that each of the three major events of his second coming was, will also fall on the appropriate Jewish holidays. Because yeah. he kept the law. Amen. Even though he's above the law. Yeah. But he kept the law. Amen. And the remaining three feasts <laughs> is the Feast of Trumpets. Yeah. And then the Day of Atonement. Yeah. And Tabernacles. Yeah. Okay. And they appear at the rapture of the church and the judgment of the wicked and the salvation of Israel and the establishment of the messianic kingdom. Mm -hmm. The day of atonement is a deep day. Mm -hmm. The day of atonement is the day for atoning for your sin. Mm -hmm. Many traditional Jews shut down. Mm -hmm. And they, 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 they don't cook any food or anything. Everything, you know, they observe the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And some of them that are worldly Jews, mm -hmm. they still shut down mm -hmm. for the day of atonement. Mm -hmm. I can sin all year long and catch up with you on the day of atonement mm -hmm. and ask for forgiveness. Amen. Just as people go to a priest and say, Father, forgive me for I've sinned. And they think that clears up their sin, asking a man. Right. Amen. Now that man can intercede Amen. for you, mm -hmm. yeah. but you don't need that Amen. man to Amen. ask for forgiveness Amen. for you. Yes. You can boldly go before Woo! the throne of grace Amen. and ask for yourself. Not, not getting into anybody's religion and taking anything away, but my, my reading of the Bible tells me yeah. that I can directly go, go to my father. Yeah. And I can ask him anything in my brother's name. Yeah. Yes, Lord. He said he would hook me up. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yes, God. Thank you. Mm. Mm. So a lot of these festivals and things, they get deep. Mm -hmm. And then there was the wars that destroyed the temple and all that stuff. And then they had to come back and rebuild everything. Amen. And then in the ceremonies, they have the Torah. You open the Torah. You bring yeah. the Torah in from the outside. Yeah. You kiss it. And you open it up. Yep. Reread the law. Yep. And then you get into the Seder meal and all these different yeah. things they got going on. Yeah. It's really interesting. If I had time, I'd tell you about it. <laughs> but the one book in the Bible that best describes this is the book of Ruth. Mm. Ruth took place during the spring barley harvest, mm. beginning of the summer, the wheat harvest. And Ruth and the Moabites willing to embrace the God of Israel mm. and his new law, the mm. Torah. Amen. So Ruth, Ruth was, came from, gave up all she had mm. to be a part of what God was calling her to be. Amen. Thank you. So Ruth chapter 2, we'll begin with. Ruth meets Boaz in the grain field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now Naomi had a relative on her husband's side, a man of standing from the clan of Elimelech, mm -hmm. whose name was Boaz. Mm -hmm. And Ruth, the Moabite, said to Naomi, let me go into the fields and pick up some leftover grain behind anyone in whose eyes I find favor. Mm -hmm. 
Naomi said, go ahead, my daughter. <laughs> so she went out into the field and began to glean behind the harvesters. Yeah. As it turned out, she was working in a field belonging to Boaz, right. up. who had come from the clan yeah, of Elimelech. Just then, Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. Mm -hmm. The Lord be with you. Boaz show up, you know, he in charge, larger than charge. <laughs> Boaz, he rolled in and he's greeting everybody. Amen. Somebody put this a lot higher than I had last night. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Amen. I need that stone. Okay, but Boaz <laughs> showed up, he greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you, they answered. When somebody gives you a blessing, uh -huh. return that blessing. Yeah. You have the same power and authority yeah. to bless others. Yeah. If they bless you, you bless them. Yeah. My, my youngest grandson is not yet two years old, but he'll say, bless you. Because yeah. he hear people sneeze and he yeah. bless you. And I, don't, that's, I assume that's what he's saying. But anyway, <laughs> but he'll, he'll holler real quick, bless you. Oh. You know? Uh, uh, you know, it's just, so when you get a blessing, return a blessing. He's yeah. learned that, and he ain't been on this planet two years. Yeah. But he's already learned when you get a blessing, return a blessing. If you can give a blessing, give a blessing. Amen. Be a blessing, don't be a curse. Amen. Is what God is trying to tell you. Be that blessing. Amen. Be a blessing. Amen. And then Boaz asked the overseer of his harvesters, "Who does that young woman belong to?" <laughs> The overseer replied, she is the Moabite who came back from Moab with Naomi. She said, please let me gleam and gather among the sheaves behind the harvesters. She came into the field and has remained here from morning till now, except for a short rest in the shelter. So boy said to Ruth, my daughter, listen to me. Don't go and gleam in another man's field. Don't go away from here. Amen. Stay here with the women who work for me. Amen. <laughs> See, Boaz had a message for her when he first met her. Yeah. Girl, don't be running around here gleaming at everybody right. else's field. Oh, no. <laughs> I got a field right here. Yeah. You don't have to go searching for that which God has provided for you. Yeah. It, it, you yeah. touched my heart. You touched me, girl. You did something. But when I saw you, my heart went zing. <laughs> you know, like, so don't you be running around here in all these other fields. Somebody else may get a zing. So, you, know, so, you stay right here and work with the women that I pay. I will put you with the people getting wages. So you work with the women that I pay. But see, he had heard a good report about it. His overseer said that she'd been working all day and didn't take a break. See, Boaz was looking for a companion that was a hard-working woman. He was looking for a woman that could help him get over, help him get along. He had the wealth, he had all that. But he needed somebody that could run his household, somebody that could handle his business, somebody that could do what he needed done. And when Boaz saw this woman with potential, something hit his spirit. He told that woman, don't you go nowhere. I need a little more time to check you out. I've heard a little this and that, but let, let me check you out for myself. See, and that's what people rush into things and they don't take enough time to check people out. Yeah, amen, God. Mm. And he said, stay with the women who work for me. Watch the field where the men are harvesting. Follow along after the women. I've told the men not to lay a hand on you. And whenever you are thirsty, go get a drink from the water jars the men have filled. Amen. All right, look, girl, I'm going to make your job situation even better. Well... Stay right here mm -hmm. with my women and stuff. Follow behind the people I'm paying. Amen. And I told them to take care of you. Right. And don't work all morning without a break. Yeah. As a matter of fact, there's water uh -huh. already provided. Right. Yeah. There's water with life. Living water is there for yeah. you. Yeah. Girl, I got some water to keep you alive. I got yeah. some water to refresh you. I got yeah. some water to regenerate you. I got some water to renew you. Yeah. So when you feel like you're getting low, yeah. lean into that living water. Lean into that water that's promised to you. Lean into that water that will refresh you, that water that will renew you. I got some renewed water for you. I already told the men, keep the jars full. You ain't got to worry about the water running out. You ain't got to worry about the water not being there. When you get to the water, the water will be there. You can count on it. God tells you when your water is running low, if you come to him, the living water will always be there. It will always be the cooling water. Good water. 
At this, she bowed down with her face to the ground. And she asked him, why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me a foreigner? See, you, you a rich Israelite. You got plenty of money. Women knocking down your door, I'm sure. You, you, every time you go to the store, somebody's slipping your number. You know, she said, I just say it. You, you know, you know it, I remember one time when E.V. Hill was preaching at East High. Uh -huh. And after his wife died, he was talking about all the women that brought him cakes and all the women that brought him dinner and all the women that would just give him invites to come by the house for Sunday dinner. He said, I'm an old boy from Texas. He said, I'm a hunter. I used to hunt for food to feed mama and the rest of the family. He said, all my life, I've never had a rabbit run up and jump in my arms and say, here I am. He said, I like to hunt my own. <laughs> you know? And I thought well, that was a good example. <laughs> All these people hunting him, he was ignoring. He went and hunted the one he wanted. So that's what Boaz had that mentality. You know, I'm, she said, why, why you notice me? I'm a foreigner. That's issues. You're going to have a mixed marriage and all these other issues you got to deal with. Why me? You know? So Boaz had overlooked that. Boaz replied, I've been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and your mother and your homeland and came to live with the people you did not know before. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richer in Lord, rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. And the girl, you thought you were just coming to a place where the famine was, but now you done came under the wings of the Lord. You are under the wings of the Lord. She said, now y'all, girl, you don't know. You was coming here to help your mother-in-law, but you came here to get under God's wing. You came here to be under the covering of the Lord of Israel, of Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac's God. So you've been knowing them gods in your country, but those are false gods. Now you done came into the living God, the real God of Israel. Under whose wings? The wings of the Lord. You feel that flutter. You know, you are the God, the shadow of his wings, the psalmist said. He will keep me in the shadow of his wings. Boy, is breaking it down biblically. Girl, you know, come under the wings. Hallelujah. My Lord, 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 my Thank you. The first meeting resulted in Ruth receiving a blessing from the landowner himself. Yes. Goodness. See, when you forsake your interest uh -huh. for somebody else, yes. God will take care of your interest. Yes. Her good deeds and kindness opened doors for her Amen. in spiritual realm. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank her good deeds opened up doors. Hallelujah, her deeds went before her. She ain't been there but a while during the harvest, but already people talking about yeah. how faithful she was to Naomi. Already talking about this woman had a chance. Naomi told her she can go on back home. Girl, I ain't, I ain't got nothing to give you. I'm trying to make it on my own. And she said, wherever you go, I will go. Where you die, I will die. Whatever you suffer, I will suffer. But please don't ask me to leave. Oprah said, hey, you know, that's a good deal. I can go find me another husband. You know, I love you, Naomi. You know, keep in touch. But y'all go on and go. But, but Ruth had another spirit. Yeah, yeah. She had a spirit of yeah. servanthood. Yeah. She had a spirit of not deserting people when you need them the most. Amen. Yes, yes. So she said, I'm going to take care of my mother-in-law's interests. Yeah. Hallelujah. She's getting up there. She needs somebody. She can't go gleaming in the fields. She can't do that. She done had a husband and kids yeah. and worked hard all her life. I, I care about her. I yeah. love her. Hallelujah. I'm willing to make sure that when she lay down at night, she has something to eat. I'm going to make sure she's got a roof over her head. If I got to get a job and get a nine to five, I'm going to take care of both of us. She ain't got to worry about nothing. So when you taking care of somebody else's interest, God will take care of your interest. So that's the principle that was coming in there. Yes, Lord. Yeah. My Lord. And she said, may I continue to find favor in your eyes, my Lord? She said, you have put me at ease, speaking kindly to your servant. Though I did not have a standing of one of your servants, your servants are better off than me. They live in nice shelters. They got all the food they can eat. They got nice clothes you done provided for them. And yet you treat me as equal to them. You giving me the same love and respect you give those that come into your household. You respecting me as part of your household when I'm not even part of your household. Yeah. 
as though she was wise enough to realize, hey, I want to say thank you. Yeah. Thank you for taking care of me. Yeah. Thank you for noticing me. Yeah. I ain't got no standing around here, but thank you. Amen. At mealtime, boy, I said, here, come over here. Have some bread and dip it in wine vinegar. <laughs> you know, you ain't got to just eat just old dried bread. Come on over here and dip your bread, girl. Yeah. Go, go hook it up. Yeah. Yeah. Soften that bread up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And when she sat down with the harvesters, he offered her some roasted grain. Don't be eating that raw wheat. Yeah. Dry yeah. wheat. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. 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 They, they fired up the grill because I knew I was going to have some company. Boaz had already told his people, we got guests for lunch. So Boaz had prepared that for Ruth already. See, Boaz is a man of planning. Boaz is a man of knowing what he wants and he knows how to set it up. So, when she sat down with the harvester, she offered him some roasted grain. She ate all she wanted and had some left over. She got up to glean, and Boaz gave orders to his men, let her gather among the sheaves. Don't reprimand her. Even pull out some of the stalks for her from the bundles and leave them for her to pick up. And don't you rebuke her. <laughs> okay, now the law says you can glean the edges of the field. Don't go into my crop. He tells his people, encourage her to come into the crop. Encourage her to come into the blessing. Encourage her to come in where the good stuff is. You ain't got to spend your life picking up scraps. Come into where the good stuff is. He encouraged his men. Make sure she follow you. If she look like she's headed for that dry land, tell her, oh, here's one right here that fell. The law says it hit the ground, it's yours. Oh, look, another one fell. Oh, we done got deep up in it. Look, another one fell. Another one fell. You know, I mean, blessing upon blessing upon blessing on top of blessing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. She all full and stuff. She ain't got time to be bending over, picking all that up. Yeah. They just started laying it on the ground for her to get it. Yeah. Yeah. Bundles, bundles. Yeah. I would be so. In my mind, I picture them bundling up a bundle yeah. there. Oh, he dropped a bundle. That's your. Yes. And they hit the ground becomes for the poor, right? Yeah. He dropped one. Already wrapped up. Grab, grab that bundle. <laughs> They, they, Boaz done gave the word. Amen. Take care of Ruth. Oh, man. Ruth ain't going to work hard in my field. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Proverbs 18, 16 yes. in the King James. Mm -hmm. A man's gift maketh room for him mm -hmm. and bringeth him before great men. Amen. NIV says a gift opens the way. Uh -huh. Ushers the giver into the presence of the great. Hallelujah. A gift. Yeah. Her gift. Her gift of obedience. Her gift of servitude. Amen. Her gift. Amen. Her gift was compassion. Amen. Her gift was loyalty. Amen. Her gift was faithfulness. Amen. These gifts reflected in her. Yeah. When she got to Jerusalem, they could tell yeah. that Naomi was yeah. a person with these gifts. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Her gifts made a way for her. Yeah. Hallelujah. Gifts had people talking about her. Amen. How good she was. Amen. Gifts talking about how faithful. These people didn't know man, uh, uh, Ruth. Amen. They knew Naomi. Yeah. But they didn't know Ruth. Amen. And by some of them were younger because their husbands was old enough to marry and all that. And the, children, the boys grew up got married. So some of them had never heard of Naomi either. Amen. They had to go by what folks told her about Naomi. She must have had some kind of standing before she left. Her and her husband, they had lands and stuff. So... I'm just saying, that gift opens that door. Amen. Ushers you into the presence of the great. Ushers you. Usher me into the presence of the Lord. Usher me into that. See, an usher is a guide. An usher is a guide. Take care. You need a fan. You need some water. You need a good place to sit. Oh, oh you, it, it's a little cold over here. Sit over there. Or it's a little warm over there. You know, the usher know the good spot. And the usher get to know you after a while and know what you like. Yeah. And they'll usher you into it. Thank you, Lord. See, Hallelujah, see. the best. Usher they Amen. in. Amen. Thank you, God. Usher yeah. Then we get into Ooh, glory. Glory, yes, glory, glory. The usher is out of giver. Yes, Lord. And Pentecost. Yes. 
is Holy Ghost living. Thank you, God. When you live with the Holy Ghost in you, you got to be a giver. Yeah, yeah. When you live with the Holy Ghost in you, you got to be a servant. Yes. When you live with Christ in your life, you got to do better. Mm -hmm. Because you serve a holy God. Yeah. It ain't my reputation, it's his reputation. Yes, Lord. Amen. So Ruth gleaned in the field until evening. Then she dressed the barley she had gathered. And it amounted to about an effort. She carried it back to town, and her mother-in-law saw how much she had gathered. Ruth also brought out and gave her what she had left over after she had eaten enough. Yeah. yeah this girl come in with a bundle Amen. of stuff from the poor side. She come in with enough for them to sell, Amen. basically. Yes. She Amen. come in with a pocket. Yes. Yes. Or to make as much bread and stuff as they need for a minute. Yeah. Either way, they can sell and make it. They, yeah. they, they were covered for a minute. Yeah. And not only that, here's something already done. Yeah. Here's something that's already prepared. Amen. Wow. Already prepared. Mm -hmm. Wow. Isn't God a God that prepares yeah. you? Yeah. Yes, Lord. He's a God that will prepare you. Yes, he Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, yes, Amen. Yes, yes. Worthy is your name. Yes, 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 Lord. Thank you, Lord. Her mother-in-law asked her, where did you glean today? Where'd you work? Blessed is the man that noticed you. See, Naomi been around for a minute. Amen. That somebody noticed you on that job. Mm -hmm. Somebody in authority. Yeah. Somebody that said drop something for you. Yeah. Somebody that said make it easy for yeah. you to clean. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody that said for you to get the best of the crop. Yeah. So Naomi had to ask, well, who, who's the man involved with this? Yeah. Girl, we ain't been here but a minute, but somebody yeah. don't notice you. Yeah. And it's somebody with authority, somebody with a, a, the ability to bless people. Yeah. Yeah. What's the name of the man you was working? Hallelujah. Ruth told her mother-in-law about the one and at whose place she had been working. Ah, the name of the man I work with today is Boaz, she said. Mm -hmm. The Lord bless him, Naomi said to her daughter, Lord. Has he not stopped showing his kindness to the living and the dead? Well, she added, God took care of us. Yeah. God took care of me when my husband died. Uh -huh. God took care of me when my sons died. Yeah. And is God still taking care of me? Yeah. Yeah. God is still showing me kindness. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. But she was, yeah. oh man. Yes, Lord. And then she went on and broke it down. She added, that man is a close relative. Yeah, well. He's one of our guardian redeemers. Yeah. It's a kinsman redeemer and another. Mm -hmm. He's close kin. Yeah. Hallelujah. Then Ruth the Moabite said, He even said to me, Stay with my workers until they finish harvesting all the grain. This man that gave me a seasonal job. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't been on the job for one day. Yeah. One day. But I had a job in Kentucky picking apples mm. and back in 1974. Yeah. And everybody out picked me. You know, I was half picking. You know. I barely got a couple bushes. And there was another dude named James that got paid by the hour. Mm -hmm. So James, would, I would steal two or three bushes. You know, maybe four or five. Maybe ten. Because <laughs> he got paid the same amount. He picked so fast, he was, he had just rolls. Wow. And so I was stuffing his in mine. I'd get a couple from Lee. And you know, by the end of the day, I had a nice little roll. Mm -hmm. So I did this for two days, you know. And then the man that ran the place, he asked me, he said, how many bushes you do a day? And I think I added another 20 to whatever my total was. Mm -hmm. He said, well, I'm adding another 10 to that, and I want you to work in the barn. Mm -hmm. You know, so he gave me an inside job within two days, and I couldn't stand that tree in that ladder. But I'm just saying, God had prepared for me that this man just liked me, and he thought I was intelligent enough. So I was in there watching the apples get washed, and then oh, I'd inspect them, make okay. sure they wasn't bruised. Uh -huh. And then I put them on the scale and weighed the pound with the bag on them, yeah. spin them around and twist them, put them in the cart. Oh, spin them around, wow. twist them, put them in the cart. With, with nice big fans in the bar. They had to stop working by noon because it got hot. Wow. But, he, you know, I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah. He hooked me up. Yeah. Yeah. And then he let me drive his truck. And they said, you don't let nobody but James ever drive his truck. Mm. He let me go to the store and get stuff from him with the truck. You know, we got tight. Mr. Bud Smith was his name. <laughs> Mr. Bud Smith in Paducah. And so I go here and I go there. This dude gave me full everything. You know? Yeah. And I'm just saying, when God opens the door for you, you get blessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was asking me, did I want to stay? 
like, I couldn't picture nothing in my mind to make me want to be picking apples all my life. Right. Amen. No, no, man, I, told, I got to go on further. <laughs> but I do appreciate the blessing. Amen. But this is what happened with her. Mm -hmm. Stay until the season ends. Mm -hmm. Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, it would be good for you, my daughter, to go with the women who work for him. Because in someone else's field, you might be harmed. Mm -hmm. Don't miss Naomi was in a house without food, it appears. Mm -hmm. And she was praying for Ruth's favor mm -hmm. and success for them both. Amen. Naomi may have planned on being a nanny or a maid when she returned home mm -hmm. before Ruth offered to come with her. Amen. She was just going home. She may have had to find work. Mm -hmm. But God had to get her back to Jerusalem. Yeah, all right. God had to get her there because yeah. Ruth had an appointment mm -hmm. with Boaz. Yeah. And they had to get together and make Jesse, and Jesse had to make David, and David had to go on down the line and make Jesus. So, see, so there was a reason she had to get back home. And the husband and the son that she had that had married Ruth was not part of God's lineage. So they had to be taken out. I ain't saying God took them out for that, but I'm just saying they weren't the promised one. Just as, you know, when, when Abraham made a son of his own, mm -hmm. and he told him that that's not the promised right, one. Right. So she had to get to Boaz so she could get a part of that promise. Yeah. And even when David was fleeing wow. and running from Saul, yeah. what kingdom did he go to? He went to Moabite. Moabites. Why? Because he was of the lineage of the Moabites. Yeah. And they, oh, Moabites. Didn't that have something to do with Lot? Mm -hmm. yes. Wasn't that Lot and his daughters hooking up? Yeah. Ooh. The Lord came from a family with a sister, a father, and a mother, and all that, Come and all on, that. And put him, Jesus in that line? Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Look at God. Not only once, but a couple times. Yeah. What, 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 what? Judah had a son, two, three sons died, yeah. and they gave it to Tamar? Tamar. Yeah. It happened again. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just saying. Woo, this gets deep. When God got a plan for you, yeah. she had to get to Jerusalem yeah. to get what her blessing was, Amen. to get what her future was, Amen. to get what God had already prepared Woo. everything. Amen. She went into fields that were already ready. She went into a house that was already All built. Right. Yeah. She went into yeah. everything. She, she walked into her future. Her first day on the job, the man said, don't you go nowhere else. When she came home, her mother-in-law told her, don't you go nowhere else. Yeah. Girl, your protection, your covering is in the field of Moab. Yeah. Don't leave your covering. Don't yeah. leave your protection. Yeah. Girl, you've been blessed. Yeah. You go somewhere else, you might violence might come on you. Yeah. Yeah. You a good looking woman. Ain't telling what happened to you. Yeah. Stay right there. Because my future is your future. Amen. Amen. So Naomi loved her, but she was thinking too, yeah, girl, you yeah. got to stay right where you at. <laughs> we need Boaz. That's right. That's right. So Ruth stayed close to the women of Boaz to gleam until the barley and the wheat harvest were finished. And she lived with her mother-in-law. Then we get to Ruth 3. One day Ruth's mother-in-law Naomi said to her, My daughter, I must find a home for you. Where well, you will be well provided for. I'm getting a little old girl and we've been doing good. But uh, I need to hook you up with somebody. <laughs> See, Naomi had been praying Listening to the gossip about Ruth properly. Mm -hmm. And she thought I better help her Amen. and my future too. Amen. Okay, we got that sort of thing going here, girl, but there, there's better Amen. a little further down the road. Amen. There's better within our reach. Amen. There's better within our vision. So we, we're satisfied. We're happy. We're eating every day. You're making a good little living. But now, girl, it's time for us to take it to the level Amen. that God wants us to be at. It's time for us to take it to that yeah. step where God wants you to be at. Yeah. Where God wants you to be prophets. Where God wants you to have more than just yeah. getting by. Yeah. Getting by is fine. Yeah. But God wants you to have more. Yeah. He wants you to have that Pentecostal heart. Yeah. You know, yeah. that, that Holy Ghost feel more. Yes. Yes. Now, boy, with who, whose women you have worked, is a relative of ours. See, she brought this back up again. Mm -hmm. Tonight, he will be willing barley on the threshing floor. Wash and put on your perfume. Get dressed in your best clothes. Then go down to the threshing floor. But don't let him know you are there until he's finished eating and drinking. And when he lies down, when he lies down, note the place where he is lying. Then go over and uncover his feet and lay down. And he will tell you what to do. She said, I will do whatever you say. Ruth answered. So she went down to the threshing floor and did everything her mother-in-law told her to do. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm pitching this. She clean in this dusty old winter. You know, people throwing up the grain, there's dust is everywhere. She got on her best clothes. Got on her best perfume. I don't know how much she brought back from where she was, but she, they were just now making money. So that would be maybe a gift her husband gave her or something her father gave her for a wedding. But whatever perfume she had, that Chanel number five, whatever she had, <laughs> she put it on. So now Boaz that had a few drinks, he's laying down. And now all of a sudden... What's that? Ooh, somebody smell good around here. Nah, that's a good dream. He roll over again. What's that? <laughs> you know? so in the middle of the night, something startled the man. He turned over and there's a woman lying at his feet. You done rolled over and somebody hit your feet and they ain't supposed to be there. Wait. What's that? Yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, your feet hit something that ain't supposed to be there. Yeah, right. You could be halfway between a dream and halfway yeah, whatever. Right. You know, oh, well, who's in this room? Yeah, ain't nobody right. supposed to be here but me. Yeah, hey, I'm the foreman. I'm the owner. I'm over, I got my own area. Yeah, But there's something over it, but there's no fear. There's no danger because I don't feel in danger. I don't feel I have to defend myself. So, you know, the spirit is working with me. See, something startles the man in the night. God does some of his best work after dark. Amen. And in complete darkness. Mm -hmm. When you can't see and you can't feel what's going on, Amen. God is doing his best work. Yeah. Yeah. You don't see how this thing's going to work out for you. God is doing his best work. When God has darkened things around you, he's eliminated the things that are taking your stare. He's eliminated things that are taking your concentration. He's eliminated the things that keep making your mind water, making your eyes wander. God starts eliminating things that are taking you off of him. And when you're in the complete dark, when you're in that dark prayer, that dark prayer time, that dark room, that dark closet, when you're seeking God in the darkness, the lights are shut off, the TV shut off, the radio shut off. When you're laying in the darkness of the bed and you're seeking God, God works in the dark. Something startled that man. That was the Holy Ghost. Get up, man. You got an appointment. Get up, man. You got your future laying at your feet. Get up, this woman you've been hooking up. She done came to you. He said in verse 9, Who are you, he asked. She said, I'm your servant, Ruth. She says, spread the corner of your garment over me, since you are a guardian redeemer of our family. I come here. You know you like me, I like you. You know there's a future for us. Do you want me? You know? She said, put your coat over me. Cover me with your garment. What the woman said, if I can touch the hem of Jesus' garment, I'm going to be all right. She said, if I can get this garment to come over me, Naomi and I will be all right. Amen. She wasn't sure whether or not he rejected her or not. Amen. She know they had a little thing going, but uh -huh. you never know until it's really cemented. Uh -huh. So when she laid down in faith, uh -huh. you know, told the man, cover me up. Uh -huh. Be my cover. Uh -huh. Cover me up. Yes. Be the head of my life. Yes. Be my spiritual yes. cover. Yes. Be my husband. Yes. Be the one that I'm going to have children with. I want you to cover me. Yes. She wanted a covenant with this Amen. man. This wasn't about sex or nothing. This yeah. was about she wanted a covering. That's right. That's right. You know, she could find any man on the street. That's what she wanted. Yeah. She wanted a man that would be a covering yes. for her. Yes. Yes. Verse 10, the Lord bless you, my daughter, he replied. This kindness is greater, greater than that which you showed earlier. Oh, wow. You not grand after the younger men, whether rich or poor. Girl, you could have anybody in this city you really want. You are a good looking woman. <laughs> Bless you, girl. You ain't after my money. Uh, uh, <laughs> and now, my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all you ask. Right. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All you ask. Oh, Amen. Amen. Just God, mm. Mm. All the people of the town know that you're a woman of noble character. Mm -hmm. I already know you right. Not only me, but everybody else know you got a high moral standard. Amen. Everybody else know that you got character. Amen. Everybody else can see it in you. When you walk with character and you live in character, people can recognize character. Because she said, I already know you got noble character. Although it is true that I'm a guardian, guardian redeemer of our family, there is another one who's more closely related, related than I. Amen. <laughs> he said, don't be afraid though, girl. I got you. Stay here for the night. And in the morning, if he wants 
to do his duty as your guardian redeemer, good. Let him redeem. Mm -hmm. But if he is not willing, as surely as the Lord lives, mm -hmm. I will do it. Amen. Lie here until the morning. Amen. Just let me keep smelling that good person. <laughs> Keeping my feet warm. Said when David got old, he had to have a body yeah, warmer. Yeah, said he yeah. never had sex with her, nothing ever. Uh -huh. He he just laid with her. Uh -huh. And he said, but you know, just keep me warm. Girl, just lay here. This is the harvest that was getting a little nippy at night. You know? But just stay here. Come under my cover. You ain't got to go nowhere. Just lay here till daylight. So she laid at his feet until morning, but got up before anyone could recognize, be recognized. And he said, no one must know that a woman came to the threshing floor. And you know, this kind of reminds me of when Jesus walked through the crowd. You know? And they said he just went through the crowd. It reminds me of other times when God has allowed things to happen. Mm -hmm. The guards are sleeping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, or whatever. You know, yes, yes, you, yes. when Peter and them went through the thing. You know what yes. I'm just saying? When God allows something to happen, when Peter came out to jail. Yes. You know what I'm saying? When, when yes. God does something, mm -hmm. all these men on the floor and all that, this woman smelling good, laying yes. there all night, ain't nobody woke up. Yes. Yes. Ain't nobody, somebody had to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Something. Yes. And nobody saw nothing. Nobody. God, what, what was it? When Saul and Abner were sleeping, mm -hmm. David went there and cut. He <laughs> took his sword and his water jug yeah, yeah, yeah. and went back, and they didn't see nothing because they were sleeping good. Because yeah, yeah. God had put them in a slumber. Yeah, yeah. So God shut down all those that could witness. Yeah, yeah. Anybody say she came down on the threshing floor? She ain't no woman of high character. Right, right, and right, any right, witness? Yeah, right. Nobody right. He you said, know? you get up and leave before anybody yeah. finds out. God has already taken care of it. God has already made sure yeah. your reputation is being taxed. God has already made sure your future is intact. God has already made sure your harvest is there. You honor God, God will honor you. He also said, bring me that shawl you are wearing. Hold it out. When she did so, he poured into it six measures of barley. Placed the bundle on her, and then he went back to town. Now he done hooked up with all now she walking out there in the middle of the morning, all these groceries on the back <laughs> in her best dress. <laughs> Smelling good, looking good, and got a harvest on her back. <laughs> you know, her harvest that came in. Her harvest had arrived. Not only do I have a harvest, I got physical harvest. I got proof. My harvest has came in. I got proof that it's my time to be blessed. I got proof that this is my festival of weeks. I got proof that I'm in the harvest. I'm, I'm getting the thing that I'm going to get. Thank you for the harvest. Thank you for the harvest, God. Oh, God. Ruth came to her mother-in-law, mother Naomi, and asked, How did it go, my daughter? Woman, don't you see all this stuff on my back? You don't see this backpack? <laughs> How did it go? We done got paid. <laughs> then she told her everything boy has it done for her. And added, he gave me these six measures of barley. You know I ain't had no money to go to the store. Mm -hmm. Saying, don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. Mm -hmm. oh, Show your mother-in-law I'm serious. Yes, yes, I'm yes, sending you yes, back one of the abundance. Yes, yes, Until we get all this legal matter said, she ain't got to clean no more. Yeah, you, yeah. you you don't walk into your blessing. Yes, yes. She got six measures, six yes, days of cleaning yes, or whatever. Yes, yes. Enough until we can handle the legal. Yes, yes. So don't you even worry about it. I'm going to take care of you. Yes, you, yes. you have six days you should work on the seventh day. What? Rest. Yes. Girl, you going into six measures of food. Don't come back to my field. Ain't no need you picking up nobody else's wheat. Man, you moving from the field to the fabulous. From the field to the fabulous. You know? Wow. wow. Mm. Then Naomi said, wait, my daughter, until you find out what happens. For the man will not rest until the matter is settled today. So I already got my six days of supply. But girl, we're going to wrap this up today. God is just letting you know this thing is coming. Your harvest is here today. This matter is going to be settled today. 
I've been praying and asking God, why are we going through all this stuff? You know, you're getting stuff and notices on this and that and all that. And on the other hand, you're getting blessings here and there. You know, blessings are coming while the other things are coming to you. But God is steadily telling me the harvest is here. The harvest is here. This is, our, this is why we are having this conversation. The harvest is here. The harvest is here. God is working so many things behind the scenes. The harvest is here. I'm just telling you. People talking about doing work on the building we don't have to pay for. People talking about doing work on my house I don't have to pay for. The, the, the season is here. God is here. Blessings are here. I'm just telling you, this is that season. So this man ain't going to rest. Don't give yourself rest till you realize your blessings. Amen. Don't give yourself rest till you Amen. prayed about it. Amen. Don't give yourself rest till you ask God, what is my harvest? Don't give yourself rest until God reveals your harvest. Don't take no rest. Yes. Naomi said, Boaz is not going to rest. Man, I just, you know, this is such a beautiful story. You can preach this well. But, you know, there's so much stuff you can pull out of this. Chapter 4. Meanwhile, Boaz went up to the town gate, mm -hmm. sat down there just as the guardian redeemer he had mentioned came along. Mm -hmm. Boaz knew where his spot was mm -hmm. in the city. Uh -huh. And he gonna go sit right there at his table. Okay. Come on. Come on. Boaz said, come over here, my friend. And sit down. You know, we family. Come on, man. Sit down. So he went over. Sit down, cuz. I gotta tell you something. So he went over and sat down. Boaz, Boaz told, took Ten of the elders of the town said, sit here. Uh -huh. Not only you sit down, all you other wise men and leaders of the community, come over, we got some business to discuss. And they did so. Then he said to the guardian redeemer, Naomi, who has come back from Moab, is selling the piece of land that belonged to our relative Elimelech. I thought I should bring the matter to your attention and suggest that you buy it in the presence of these seated here. And in the presence of the elders of my people, if you will redeem it, do so. But if you will not, tell me, so I will know. For no one has the right to do it except you. And I am next in line. Right. See, boy, his, can you imagine his heart, his mind, his spirit? Amen. Man, the law says I got to tell you. Yeah. It's up to me. We've been married yesterday. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I got to do the right thing. Right. God can't bless no mess. Right. So I can't sneak and get married. Right. So he said, but the next day, yeah. this man done worked hard, drank all night and everything else. And now he's up first thing in the morning handling uh -huh. business. Catching the man as soon as he got there. He didn't go back to his house. Amen. That's right. Boaz didn't go back to take a shower, none of that. That's true. Boaz got up and went to the town gate. Yep, yep, yep. Found him and found ten other elders. I need some witnesses. Amen. All things must be confirmed by what? Yeah. Two witnesses? Yeah. Boaz and I got eight more. <laughs> you know? Boaz is handling his business. Yeah. Glory. The heat quickly said, I redeem it. Then Boaz said, on the day you buy the land from Naomi, you also acquire Ruth the Moabite, the dead man's widow, mm -hmm. in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property. Mm. So you know when if was asking Jesus about one brother married her, mm -hmm. he died. One brother married her, yeah. he died. Yeah. One brother married her, he died. Because they all had to raise up seed. Yeah. So that this is what he's getting back to. Mm. You know, you, you, the custom is this man died without an heir. Right. So the first yeah. child will be his heir. Mm -hmm. so, so that's what he's trying to say. And at this, the guardian redeemer said, then I can't redeem it. I might endanger my own estate. Oh. Mm -hmm. You redeem it yourself. I can't do it. Right. Man, so you cutting it in my money. Yeah. I can come get Ruth's money, but then Ruth's kid can get my money from my kid. No, no, you take Ruth and the, the other stuff. Mm -hmm. Don't be messing with my money. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you redeem it. I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Now, in the earlier times in Israel, for the redemption and the transfer of property to become final, mm -hmm. one party took off his sandal and gave it to the other. Yeah. This was the method of legalizing the transaction yeah. in Israel. So the guardian redeemer said to Boaz, buy it yourself. And he removed his sandal. Uh -huh. 
See, I just shook the dust off of this deal. Okay. I'm taking my shoes off. Then yeah, yeah, Boaz announced to the elders and all the people, Today you are witnesses that I bought from Naomi all the property of Eliminate, Kilion, and Malon. Mm -hmm. I've also acquired Ruth the Moabite, mm -hmm. and Malon's widow, as my wife, in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property. Okay. So this so that his name would not disappear from among his family Amen. or from his hometown. Mm -hmm. Hometown. Today, you are witnesses. See, Boaz announced to all the others. I done bought all this. Amen. See, Boaz had some coins. Yes. Boaz didn't say, let me go down there and get this finance. Let me go down there and see if I can get a loan. Let me talk to a loan officer. He didn't say none of that. Boaz said, today, uh -huh. I'm buying everything they own. Uh -huh. All of it. Uh -huh. And I ain't worried about my inheritance. I got enough money, I can buy this and buy yours too. <laughs> you know what he was saying? You know? And his name won't disappear. I ain't even worried about that. Mm. I want Ruth. Uh -huh. If she got to raise up a son and the first one become his in the custom, fine. The rest of the kids is mine, we're going to be all right. Amen. But Ruth is going to be mine. He, he wanted Ruth, not the land. Mm. His name won't disappear. Bless him. I'm so glad they moved yeah. to the land of Moabite. <laughs> And the famine hit, and they came back. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. <laughs> I've been running around here bachelor all these years. Couldn't find what I was looking for. What I was looking for came to me. It came to my field gleaming. I wasn't out there chasing no women or nothing. I was out there handling my business. All of a sudden, my future walked into my field. My future walked up to me. Wow. I mean, tell me God won't do it. Yes, he will. Then the elders and all the people at the gate were witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your home like Rachel and Leah, mm -hmm. who together built up the family of Israel. Mm -hmm. May you have a standing in Ephraim and become famous in Bethlehem. And through the offspring the Lord gives you by this young woman, Amen. Wow. may your family be like that of Perez, who Tamar bore to Judah. Mm -hmm. see, see, there we go back to that. Yeah. Daughter-in-law situation. So then it tells you in verse 13, Naomi gains a son. So the two, the one she lost, she got another. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. And when he made love to her, the Lord enabled her to conceive and she gave birth to a son. The woman said to Naomi, praise be the Lord who this day has not left you without a guardian redeemer. Maybe he become famous throughout all of Israel. Wow. That's it. The women of the town started praising her and her. You come back broke calling yourself Mara. Mm -hmm. You were drained and broken, busted and disgusted. But look at you now. May this man be as blessed. May your seed be as blessed as Rachel and Leah. Rachel and Leah started the whole generation. He doesn't know. He said you will, he will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons has given him birth. The Naomi, Naomi took the child in her arms and she cared for him. The women living there said, Naomi has a son. And they came and they named him Obed. And he was the father of Jesse and the father of David. This woman took so much, so much good care of Boaz's son and child. He was with his grandmother so much they started saying, that's Naomi's baby. Uh, <laughs> that's Naomi's kid. Mm -hmm. You know, Naomi was proudly running around. I got another son. Amen. <laughs> what did it say when, when uh, Job had lost all his family and the Lord replaced yeah. everything else? Yeah. And he said he gave me some more. Yeah. So she was in that situation. Yeah. She got a new son, yeah. a new house. Yeah. She was hooked up. Yes. Real. Naomi didn't have to worry about no, nothing. Not Go on down to Carson Pier, get what you want. Yeah, <laughs> you know? Have them deliver. Yeah. <laughs> you know I'm just saying. Can you imagine Naomi was living it up? <laughs> Whatever you want, mama. Let's. Get it. Boy has called her mama. You know? <laughs> then we go to Acts 2 with us real quickly. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all gathered together in one place, suddenly like a sound of the blowing and the violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Yeah. Yeah. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Mm -hmm. All of them were filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. 
and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard this sound, the crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. So if you had a Texas accent or you had a New York accent or a Boston accent, they heard you speaking with the accent from where you came from. As I, you know, this was so precise. You was hearing them in your native tongue. And they said, utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all of these who are speaking Galatians? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phyria and Pamphylia, Pamphylia, and Egypt, and parts of Libya, and Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Christians, and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongue. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Somehow, somehow, ever made fun of them. They said they had too much wine. And Peter addressed the crowd. And Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews, all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No. This is what was spoken of by the prophet Joe. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Hallelujah. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Hallelujah. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even my servants, both men and women. I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness. The moon to blood. Before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord. Will be saved. Amen. And he breaks it down. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth is a man who is accredited by God. And to you by miracles. Wonders and signs. Which God did among you through him. As you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, Amen. freeing him from the agony of death. Because it was impossible for death to keep his hold on him. Amen. Amen, Lord. Uh -huh. And David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me because he's at my right hand and I would not be shaken. Yeah. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body will rest in hope. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You have filled me with the joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried. And his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet. And he knew that God had promised him. On an oath, he would place one of his descendants on the throne. And seeing what is to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah. And that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, and he's received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit. And has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven. Yet he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. And when the people heard this, they were cut to their heart. And they said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off and all whom the Lord our God will call. It says, with many other words, he warned them and pleaded with them, save yourselves from the corrupt generation. Those 
who accepted his message were baptized. About 3,000 were added to their number that day. Man. 3,000 people joined your church in one day. <laughs> Three times. Oh, God. That's I don't think I've seen anybody else had that many join in one day. But that's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is moving. When the Holy Ghost is moving people here. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's that harvest. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He said, my first point, when you forsake, when you forsake your interest for someone else, God will take care of your interest. Mm -hmm. Amen. When you give up your needs right. for somebody else's needs, God will handle your needs. Mm -hmm. You got to be willing to trust God. Trust God that he will replenish what you give out. Mm -hmm. Trust God that he will multiply what you give. Mm -hmm. Trust God when you plant a seed, He's going to bring a harvest. you got to trust God. And my second point, something started the man in the night. <laughs> God does some of his best work in dark, in complete darkness. When you're completely in dark and completely confused and you completely don't know what to say or what to do, God is doing his best work. When your heart is hurting, when your spirit is hurting, when you don't even feel like you want to pray, when you don't feel you can go on any further, God is doing his best work. When you feel like you suffered so much loss and you don't know if you could take another loss, God is doing his best work. When you feel like you've been through all you want to go through, God is doing his best work. When you are bowed over with the weight of the things that are weighing you down, God will raise you up and you will stand up on that day. He will renew your strength and you'll be able to run on You'll be able to say, I am in no way tired. I got to run on for the Lord. He gives you the strength. My last point. I've been waiting and praying that we may see a Pentecostal day. A day of redemption in our time. No more man-made customs and rules. Just pouring out of the flesh for all people, Amen. as Joel prophesied. Amen. Don't you want to see a day yes. 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 like Peter saw? Yes. The day Amen. of Pentecost like he saw? Yes. Yes. Thank people you, God. ain't worried about whether or not women can preach. People yes. ain't worried about Amen. whether or not uh, you speak in tongues. People ain't worried Amen. about whether or not you were ordained by this body or ordained Amen. by that body who Hallelujah. called you. People ain't worried about all this man-made stuff. Amen. They ain't worried about all that. A day of Pentecost, the Feast of Weeks, the pouring of the Spirit. When the Holy Ghost comes, everything comes under His power. When the Holy Ghost comes, everything must change. When the Holy Ghost comes, everybody got to get right. When the Holy Ghost comes, it's a new anointing, it's a new fire. You got to pray for the Holy Ghost. Pray that the Holy Ghost be released. Pray that the Holy Ghost will take over. Pray the Holy Ghost to fill your mind. Pray the Holy Ghost to fill your relatives. Pray the Holy Ghost to fill those you're praying for. Pray for the Holy Ghost. Don't pray for salvation. Pray for the Holy Ghost. When they get the Holy Ghost, they'll get saved. You can't have the Holy Ghost and not be saved. When he comes in, you're going to get right. He's going to burn out everything that don't belong. He's going to burn out everything that shouldn't be there. He's going to take away what you don't need. He's going to wash you clean. Though your sins be red as blood, he will wash them white as snow. The Holy Ghost. Pray for a Pentecost. People are arguing, talking about you, saying things about you. Pray they get the Holy Ghost. People got your business all in their business. Pray they get the Holy Ghost. Amen. People saying evil things about you or things about you and your family, yeah. pray to get the Holy Ghost. Amen. Pray the Holy Ghost in their life. Yeah. You won't see somebody change, start praying for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Don't worry about the sin. Pray for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Pray they get the Holy Ghost. Amen. Pray the Holy Ghost comes. Yeah. And when the Holy Ghost comes, he will usher in all things. Yeah. All things. Amen. Come under his power. Yeah. People done forgot about the Holy Ghost. Yeah. The Holy Ghost has power. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Redeeming power. Yes, yeah. Renewing power. Yeah. Refreshing power. Yeah. Power from on high. Yeah. Holy Ghost power. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Holy, holy, holy. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy. Yeah. The angels cried out. Holy, holy, holy. 
They said it constantly before the Lord, and all they say is holy, 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 holy. Pray for the Holy Ghost. Pray that anointing. Pray for Pentecost. We need a feast of weeks. Holy Ghost anointing. Yes, Lord. As we rededicate this ministry, we come back into this building. We are praying for a Pentecostal building. A spirit-filled building. People don't mind praying for you. People don't mind praying for your good. People don't mind coming in agreement for your blessing. People that are not jealous. They're praying you be blessed. Because they know if God is blessing you, then there's right around the corner. Amen. Oh, glory, glory. Amen. Amen, my God. Hallelujah. Amen. My time is up. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory. Hallelujah. God is coming for you. Yes, Lord. Everybody under the sound of my voice. I want to know, do you have the Holy Ghost? Yes, Lord. Have you let the Holy Ghost into your life? Yes. Oh, yes, God. Are you still playing with the Holy Ghost? You think you let him in your life, but you're still in control. Jesus, Jesus. He says he will give all that come unto him a chance. Yes, he will fill you. you My prayer is right now that the Holy Ghost fill you. Yes. And that you come to a saving knowledge of Christ. If you don't know Christ, you can call us 630-906-1392. 630-906-1392. Call. Somebody will be able to lead you to Christ. But get into the house of the Lord. Yeah. It says don't forsake the coming together of the believers. Mm -hmm. You got to come in to feel the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So we know that God is doing a new thing. Mm -hmm. The Feast of Weeks. Mm -hmm. This is a Feast of Weeks. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Lord, I thank you for this evening. I thank you for your spirit going before us. And I thank you that you're keeping us. I thank you that you're going to watch over us each and every day. Give us the strength. Give us a good rest. Give us time to come back in here tomorrow to be ready to hear another dynamic message. Yes, I pray for the speakers that are to come. Yes. That you anoint their voice. You anoint their help. Yes. You anoint their vision. Give them clarity. Yes, Give them what they need, Lord. Don't let them just keep searching and looking. Yes, let them find what the Spirit would have them to say. Use them as a vessel for you. I pray that each and every person that comes after me, that you fill them with a the Holy Ghost. Let the fire get hotter and hotter and hotter. Lord, we're praying for that week of Pentecost. Yes, Lord, we call this sacred assembly yes, that we can usher you in. Yes, and we rededicate this building to you. We yes. rededicate this congregation yes, to you. We de rededicate all that are under the sound of my voice to yes, come back to you. Yes, We're praying for a Pentecostal people. Yes. These things we Thank pray you, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Remember, he's risen. Will you? Yes, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay.